five, four, three, two, one, and cold cast. Hello, everyone. I am Ken Cole, and it's wonderful to have you here. Today is a very special day. As you can see, this is the first ever Cole cast, and there's a reason for that. We have a very special guest today. You've seen him probably in the over 2,000 commercials he's been in for video and radio. He's been in so many shows and movies. He was starred as Tommy Shafter in the groundbreaking sitcom Titus. You can see him now in All American, but for viewers of this channel, you probably know him best as Daniel LaRusso's car dealership rival, Tom Cole. It's my pleasure to introduce <clears throat> David Shatra. David, how are you today? Thank you very much. Boy, I love that. Uh, I love that intro. I, that, that's very impressive. I'm quite talented. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are. And uh, that's going to be such an amazing part of today. We're going to get to hear your thoughts on Tom Cole, but also all these other great roles that everyone's probably seen you in already, aside from Cobra Kai. Uh, and so thank you. It is an honor to have you here, David. I, um, my pleasure. And I liked your opening graphics and your five, four, three. It's very exciting. <laughs> like, this it, it, we're, we're building up to something special, the Cole. Bill, right? Bill, yeah, the Cole cast. <laughs> the Cole cast, yeah. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we're going to go around and just say hi. Uh, AEH, hello, good to see you. Cobra Kai Kid, oh, it's great to have you here, Drew. Yes, it's a Cobra great, Kai great day. Uh, Clifford says hi. Nerd World, wonderful to see you. Our executive <laughs> producer, Dick Terry Silver Rocks, how are you? Matt Moore, uh, will you get Mr. Cole? Yes. Boba? <laughs> get, well, I got a, I got a sparkling water right now, but yes, give me a boba, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And uh, for Cobra Cole fans, uh, the Big T joins us. Uh, he says the Coles are very dear family friends. Really looking forward to this. So that's great. And Chris Klotz, thank you so much for the super chat. Hello, Ken Cole, Tom Cole. You're the best around. Ooh. Well, thank you guys. And um, we'll try to get to as many comments as we can today. But yeah. um, first off, David, uh, how are you doing? What, how how are, how are things going right now? You are in a series called All American on CW. Uh, how's that going? It's great. Uh, I'm a recurring. Yes, I just got that last year. Uh, what can I tell you about it? I'm playing a character called Professor. I don't even know where to look. I'll look over here. Uh, a character called Professor Hill. Um, he's a law professor, and he has taken a one of the series regulars, uh, Breezy, who plays the role of Coop, under his wing. She wants to get into law school and pre-law, so she's worked her way into his class and we're shooting my third episode actually Monday. So at, wow. at, at uh, my call time is uh, 5 30 AM dark 30 after the oh, Super man. Bowl. Yeah. But it's oh. great. Cause I, I love those because you, you get on set by five 30. They want you on set by seven hair and makeup done. I'll be done by nine. I'll be out. So I have my whole day, whole day. So it's great. But yeah, it's exciting to be working, you know, always, always exciting to be working. That's fantastic. And uh, for everyone who hasn't seen uh, All American on CW yet, I thought I would share a clip of you from one of your uh, recent episodes. Oh, God, I didn't um, even see this. Go ahead. I don't watch yeah. myself. Why would I watch myself? Who wants to watch <laughs> themselves age in front of you? No, you don't want to do that. But yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, you know how they always uh, the actors will set it up. Um, yes. I have no idea what I'm about to see. So go ahead. This should be fun. Now, tell us a little bit. You're, so you play a law professor, is that right? I, yes, I'm, I'm teaching the uh, introduction to law, pre-law class at a college where Coop is one of, she's auditing my class in order to try to get in. Um, I only take a couple of audits each year in case kids drop out. So is this, I believe in the first two episodes that I've done, she uh, pitches herself to get in my class. She gets in. And I think the second episode that I shoot, I'm in class and she's arguing a point about um, an affirmative, not affirmative action. Uh, an African-American man was fired from his job for wearing dreadlocks, but he did not show them during the interview. He wore a hat. So when he got the job, goes to work, takes his hat off, he gets fired. And we have these, was that a, uh, was it a legitimate fire? So, but I'm sure, oh, I'm not sure what, not sure what the scene actually is. So play it for me. I'd like to see it. I haven't even seen it. All right, it. Let, let's check out uh, David in All-American. 
Before we do, I think we're missing a key piece of information in the Tyler versus Osmond dental case. The proverbial ship has sailed, Miss Cooper. Next case. Please, just hear me out. You have 30 seconds. Okay, well, I went over all the facts of this case and realized there's no language in the company's personal grooming policy that says dreadlocks are not allowed. Okay, I'm listening. Yeah? Okay, well, it, it only required that the hair be smooth or contained or must reflect a business image. And those are words used to target people who look like me, which is discriminatory and flat out wrong. That's why I always fight for the underdogs. So hopefully, Ren Tyler won this case and still has his job. He does. And that's the reason he won. Nice work, Miss Cooper. Wow. Wow, that's great. Oh Look at me, fair and, fair and impartial Tom Cole. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, for everyone who's been seeing you as this villain, sort of, on Cobra Kai, you've played just a variety of characters, and here you're playing a good law professor. You know, it's funny you say that, because uh, when I got Titus years ago, um, Jack Kenny, the executive producer, said, you're pretty much 90%, the actor is pretty much 90% of the character, that we're auditioning for. And throughout my lovely career, I've done, I've done about 40, maybe 45 TV shows, guest stars, and 99% of them, I am, I'm the jerk. <laughs> I'm the, <laughs> as, as I was affectionately called in Cobra Kai, the douche clown. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I always play uh, the, the, like the, the corrupt politician, the, the serial rapist, the, the guy who, you know, narcs, the bad, the bad, uh, anybody who's just doing anything nefarious. Uh, so this was actually a nice uh, departure from that playing a, a law professor. Plus, you know, I get to grow the beard out, which makes me look smart. Because, you know, <laughs> I got, I'm as, I'm as dumb as a box of rocks. You don't want to know my SAT scores. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. My goodness. Well, the thing is, you play so many uh, crafty, clever, um, and dare I say, conniving characters. Um, I know a lot of people right now are itching to hear about your experience uh, as Tom Cole on Cobra Kai. Big T says Tom Cole is as much of a villain as I am. Um, so, so here, guys, for everyone, I know most of you have seen Cobra Kai, but let me pull up um, some clips from Cobra Kai so we can see Tom Cole in action. And and before we get going, what? Is there is there something that you feel like people need to know about Tom Cole that uh, maybe isn't apparent directly by watching these scenes? <clears throat> well, you said something interesting about I play these kind of crafty, kind of villain esque type of characters. <clears throat> they're they're unbelievably fun to play, um, and I always try to find uh, when I play them. The other underlying note is to be likable, being a villain. Um, and that's a it because it, it makes it makes the audience member go, I can't wait to see what he's going to say next. Also, too, because of my physical height and presence, I'm five seven. I'm not a, I'm not a very gigantic kind of guy. So I don't I don't really um, pose any physical threat. So I use I, I like to find his snarkiness and villainness comes from his use of language and being a smart aleck and being conniving and being deceptive um, that way, but also being humorous about it because I really enjoy turning the screws on people. I can't do it physically. I do it emotionally or, you know, through, through words. So the thing I loved about what they did with Tom Cole was because Daniel LaRusso, Ralph, is a karate master, he could take me out in a second. But my, my uh, skill is I go, I go underneath and I get to him, you know, by, by just kind of poking at him, poking at him. Um, but it's from an audience perspective, I like to play characters that are fun to watch that are evil, not inherently evil, but just, you know, the, the guy you just, oh, if I could just get alone in a room with him for three seconds just to punch him. And I'm like, Come on, punch me, punch me with like the cop standing <laughs> behind me. Go ahead, take a shot. It's that right. kind of thing where it's like, oh. Those characters, I'm always drawn to them because if you find the likability factor, um, the human side of him, the reason why he is like that is because he can't physically stand up. He can't, I can't take people on physically. So that 
is kind of attuned to why I think I get these roles because being a small kid, being the shortest kid in class growing up my entire life in grade school, I wasn't bullied per se, but I was an easy target. And the only way to get out of it was to be funny. So mm. it's like, let, don't beat up Shatra. He's funny. He's fine. He's not. Any, just don't, don't hit Shatra. He's, well, let's invite him because he's funny. We can pick on him, but don't hit him. So that kind of comes through with my performance, especially with this guy. Because he's, I mean, so blatantly. I mean, are you going to show the car? The, the yes. car dealership we're, one? We're going to show uh, a couple scenes. We're going to show a couple scenes uh, to refresh everyone on many people's favorite character, Tom Cole. So let's <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, share these scenes. But, but watch how much hey, I enjoy hey, being. Hey, oh. Could you excuse me right. just for a moment? Uh, help yourself to a, a boba tea, Angela. Can you show her the boba? So how was lunch? Cut the crap! I just saw your new TV spot. You did? What'd you think? Well, I don't know if my favorite part is when you steal the whole plant thing from me or imply I'm a water waster. Or maybe it's when you suggest that I am somehow unpatriotic. <laughs> you know it's patriotic. Free speech. Besides, I'm just doing what you're doing. I'm not really a revolutionary soldier and you're not really a karate guy. <laughs> Actually, I was two-time All-Valley champ. Whoa! Did you hear that, everybody? We got a two-time karate champ over here. I guess I should be worried. What's the The Russos. <laughs> Tom Cole. What the hell is he doing here? <sighs> oh, I see you got a Keurig. Should have sprung for the Nespresso. The customers, they line up for it. But then again, you need two or three people to actually form a line. What do you want, Cole? I heard sales weren't going so well over here. Guess that happens when you put kids in comas, am I right? <laughs> really, Anoush? You walk in here with this guy and let him talk to me like that, huh? It's just how he talks. You get used to it. What do you want, Tom? Relax. I'm not here to fight. That's uh, your domain. I'm here as a friend. I thought to myself, Tom, the LaRusso's spiraling. I mean, no customers, no Nespresso. You alone can help them. So I'm here to make you an offer. You want to buy a car? <laughs> Dan, a car? No, no, no. I want the whole shebang. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Be beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Deuce clown. Deuce clown. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, for me, and, you know, it's not just the last name. He is, like, one of my favorite characters. I love him for all those reasons you talk about, that he's he's relatable, He he's likable, but he's kind of a pain. It's just... It's wonderful. And I, I just wanted to kind of get your perspective on how did you get involved in this? And did you have a clue that this series would become as popular as it has? Well, uh, first question first, I got involved in this the same way uh, any show that I get. I got an um, agent called and said, I have an audition for you. I went in, they got the sides, went in and prepared and read for the casting. And here in L.A. And uh, it, got, it got sent off to the fellas um, in Atlanta where they were shooting it and they picked me. Um, and then they just called me back and said, yeah, here's the shooting dates. Here's the airline ticket, show up, have fun. And I thought it was a one and done. I didn't realize there was going to be extra episodes. Um, did I think it was going to be huge? Uh, yeah. I, I thought based on what's been happening since the pre pandemic and pandemic, there seems to be this outpour of doing um, reboots, as they call them, to get you know old shows that were favorites back on the air. I mean, Karate Kid was it was a massive, massive show when I was younger. Um, Ralph and I are the same age, so uh, when it came out, we were I, I watched it and could totally relate. I was an East Coast kid. I grew up in Albany, New York, and lived in New York. Um, pretty much my whole life until I moved out to California in 2000. Um, he was very relatable. He's my age. What he went through, he was bullied. He, didn't, he couldn't fight back. And it, that whole kind of concept, rebooting it, it still had legs today. Um, there's still, we talk about this all the time on social media and the social media and the bullying and and kids just fighting, and it seems to be everything on TikTok. People are still beating the crap out of each other, and, and <laughs> unfortunately. But 
I didn't think I knew it was going to hit because it had a sentimental uh, attachment for people my age, but because they did the smart thing and turned it into a family drama. Daniel's older now, married, kids, that, and then these kids are going to go to karate class and do this kind of stuff. That would bring in the younger audience. So we were already hooked. I was like, I'm going to watch it because all the things that they brought up in the show, uh, the flashbacks and all the people that were in it, it's all just a walk down memory lane for us. Um, but to the extent where it was like, I think it was like number one on Netflix, the number one highest rated show or highest performing show on Netflix and number one to be the karate kid, um, Cobra Kai was a, that was pretty, pretty special to be part of that, especially in the first season. Um, and then I came back in the third, they did ask me to come back in the second season for an episode, but you know, I, we talked about this before you want, as an actor, you want to get a job, book an air, airplane ticket. So unfortunately <laughs> I was, I was, I did another show. I guess started on another show the same week, the same week as they wanted me for Cobra Kai back in Atlanta. And I'm just like, come on, man, there's 52 weeks in a year. Why can't we do one, one week, one, another week? Why do I have this? Why do I got to get two shows in the same week? But that's how it happens. But they were really generous to bring me back for the third season. Oh, that's wonderful. And more Tom Cole is always welcome. Absolutely. More Tom Cole. <laughs> yes. Uh, Kate Maloney, thanks for being a channel member. Kate says, sounds like David is following in the footsteps of Alan Rickman when it comes to developing relatable villains. Come on, Alan Rickman from Die Hard. Do you remember that? I'll be on the, I'm, I'm an excellent thief. And I'll be on, uh, in this day tomorrow, I'll be on the beach earning 20%. And then I loved him in um, Robin Hood when he's chasing after him. And he goes to he goes to the girl, the 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 servant girl, and he goes, "I want you in my room. Uh, you be in my room by nine o'clock." And then he turns around and goes back, and he goes and bring a friend. And then he goes continues on the chase. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, he was amazing. Such an. But that's exactly right. Thank you for that comment. Um, but a relatable playing a relatable villain. They're always fun. Always oh, yeah. fun. They are. And da and Sasha David has an interesting comment. Tom Cole reminds me of Saul Goodman at times. That's a really and, good one. Yes. And I'll, I'm going to confess, I've had that in mind myself. And uh, we're going to talk about this in a little bit. Marianella says we need a Cole family spinoff. <laughs> as viewers know, uh, we've, we've, we've dipped our toe into that waters. And we'll get back to that in just a minute. But that's something that Tom Cole reminds me of is... Uh, Saul Goodman, for exactly the same reasons that you were talking about before, he does all these horrible things, but he's just entertaining, you yeah. know, and he, he's he's kind of a people pleaser, you know, um, but I don't know. What, what do you think? Do you think do you see that similarity as an actor or are you coming at it from a completely different perspective? Um, it's funny because a different perspective, because um, the Saul Goodman in comparison to Tom Cole Saul is just a much broader character. Tom just has the dealership. We don't really know about Tom's home life. Is he married? Is he single? Is he divorced? Um, you know, is, is, is he a player or is he just like all about money? Um, there's not a lot of been, there's not, there hasn't been a lot of, you know, backstory for him basically that he's just a dealership across the street from his nemesis. And he does, you know, douchey things. Uh, the cactus, the cactus commercial and it's an, it's an American plant, like just kind of like one upping the guy across the street, um, which, which is entertaining and, and fun in its own way, but there's not a lot of deep story with Tom, but, but we tried to do a little bit, our little jaunt together, which was such a good time. That was so much fun to do. Oh, um, absolutely. Op opened up the whole Cole family dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which, as viewers know, fans know, there are Coles out there. There's a Willie Cole that Terry <laughs> Silver talks about in Karate Kid 3. Yes. And we have Tom yeah. Cole. There are lots of Coles out there. And uh, I think it would be interesting to shed a light on those Coles. That's just me. Well, you, you did bring up the fact, the Easter egg, uh, for when he was in the jacuzzi. Uh, the episode, uh, the series, what was it? The... the Karate Kid 3, the Terry Karate Silver one, where he, he was in the jacuzzi, and he does mention, he does mention a coal, I believe. He does. So it, that kind of like Easter egg kind of thing. But then you've taken that, and you've added a whole, whole big backstory of us working together, and then the, that incredibly funny uh, Save Silver campaign. 
that was <laughs> that, that was sponsored by Cole Foundation, you know. Right. <laughs> so, so so can I say that uh, Tom Cole endorses the Save Silver campaign? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, for for everyone who doesn't know, um, I had the great privilege of working with David. Uh, on a short film called Cobra Cole. And this sort of takes this meta thing where uh, my my last name, of course, is Ken Cole. And I'm kind of inserted into the Coles. And right. we're kind of play with this idea that I do all this pro Terry Silver content. So maybe I work for Terry Silver and I don't want to anymore. And so yeah. I go I go to my cousin, Tom Cole or Tommy for for help. <laughs> and um why don't we why don't we play a little bit of uh, Cobra Cole? So this is uh, for everyone who hasn't seen this yet. This is after I can't get up the courage to quit my job working for the big T, the big T Terry, and I need help. And so I go to a family member for for help. So let's let's play. Let's play a few minutes of uh, Cobra Cole. Yes, please do. Always makes me laugh. <laughs> Focus. The universe is one with your chi. Steady. Ste Maria, you have to keep the board steady. Mm -hmm. Yep, my name's Marissa, sir. Call me Sensei. Y yes, Sensei. I really should go wash the windows or something. Windows can wait, Maria. Oh. Because you are about to witness the full power of a pure karate master. Keep the board steady, and I won't break your arm. <gasps> Maria! Dojo etiquette, please. My name is Marissa. Yes, Sensei. <laughs> but doorbell. Marie. <sighs> Don't worry. I'll get it. Maria, door. Maria, get the door. Uh, look who it is, my favorite cousin. What do you want, Kenny? I just need two minutes. <sighs> I'd offer you some boba tea, but, uh, you know, we just ran out. Wow, Tommy, I love what you've done with the place. Yeah. You know, you have great teeth. Thanks. You got two minutes. I'm gonna level with you. I gotta get out. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't wanna work for him anymore. Him? The big T? Why not? The guy's a global player. He's worth more than Denmark. I mean, yeah, he's a little overrated, bad business skills, and he's a complete dummy when it comes to franchises, but look, just shut up. Suck it up. Do your job. Yeah, but he's mean. Oh, no. It used to be a good job, but now I get no time off, and, and his staff is rude. Rudeness is underrated. You got a minute 30. <clears throat> a fresh fruit, Sensei? Yes. Fresh fruit? Mr. No, Kenny is about to leave. Come on, 120. Well, he's making me produce these videos to enhance his image, which is pretty hard to do with his toxic waste dumping. Ah, so the tree huggers are giving you hell, Ken? He says it's either this or he's sending me to Borneo. Uh-huh. So I'm trying to figure out what this has to do with me. One minute. I need a job. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that david you're just so amazing oh uh, you're Cole. sweet it's no, fun and, 
you know, and what was so fun is is working with you on that and kind of exploring Tom Cole or the Tom Cole type of character. Uh, what else would he be interested in doing? What would he be doing not at the dealership? Uh, you know, kind of giving even more background and color to this character who's maybe part of a wider tapestry. And uh, you just you you were absolutely phenomenal in that. And and thank well, you for doing that. Oh, well, thanks for asking. And, and hello on your uh, set choice. I mean, you found location. I'm like, that, that's like some of the nicest locations I've ever been on. That house <laughs> overlooking the valley like that was that yeah. was an amazing place. But it's interesting. Uh, it's so funny that you cut it off there because the Tom Cole is the next when we go into the living room mm -hmm. and then you see his wheel spin where it's like he needs a job. You're not going to get a job. And then it's like, but wait a minute. Yes. You're coming to me. We can do this together. And be, I can make you my patsy. You go inside. You get me some dirt on 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 the big T. I love how you you did this. Ah, oh, the lawyers, the lawyers and the legal can't mention anybody's <laughs> name. So we all know who the big T is. We know who the other Italian, the other Italian karate guy. That's funny. Um, but that's the Tom Cole that I uh, I took a lot of joy in watching you squirm and ask me for a job because it's all leverage. I've got everything. What do you want? I could, I'm being pissy to you. I'm being rude. You got two minutes. And then it's like, ooh, the second you can help me, then in the, in the living room, I come sit down next to you. I tell you, it's going right. to be all right, buddy. He's, he's just so grossly manipulative to what can serve me and using right. you. So it's, I think that was a lot, a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's amazing. Just I love that switch as well, because. When you're being nice, it's like, oh, well, this is nice. It's very yeah. tempting because you want to yeah. be on his good side. And, uh, oh, yeah, so much fun. You play it so well. And um, Thank you. It was fun. Oh, yeah. And a huge shout out to Tiffany L., who played Maria Marissa, mm -hmm. uh, who's kind of mysterious, actually, as we keep watching yeah. this movie. <laughs> um, a huge uh, Rich Baker, the amazing Dave Srock, director of mm -hmm. photography, just made that, made that movie look uh, so yeah. good. And, um, of course, our composers, Jay and Rachel White Galvin, who do an amazing job. I mean, you guys uh, did a really you did a really I mean, for the amount of time that we had. I mean, we shot the whole thing in one day, one day, you know, and uh, how many shots were there were outside, inside the kitchen, moving to a lot of movement shots and then the location of in the, in the living room and then back at the front door again, leaving. That was a lot. I mean, in a, in a normal situation, that would have been a. That would have been like, you know, a 12 hour day, uh, even more because of all this stuff and the setups. But you got you guys really just it was so great as an because, look, I'll, I'll be totally honest with you. When you, you people ask you to do stuff like this, you're like, oh, this could be a long day for me. You know, right. it's like, oh, what am I getting is every and but the minute I got there and it was like, hi, how are you? Here's you're going to set. You're going to go over here. Here is his wardrobe and makeup. This is where it comes. Boom, boom, put that there. Okay, we got set, and we just kept going, and we were done. We were done in, in what, a, a few hours? Yeah. And it was like, because we had to do it before the light went out. Got to shoot right. before, before the sun sets. <laughs> but. Indeed. And, uh, yeah, it was fantastic, and it was fun sharing with you, obviously, all of these details that uh, I'm imagining about your character's family and dynasty mm -hmm. and all the stuff that we don't even get to in the short film. So I don't know. Yeah. We'd, we'd love to explore that. I think that the character and it's just so rich. His family's so rich for potential story. Yeah. And it's, and Tom Cole's got a great house. So I love yeah, the house. It's, just, it's, yeah. a, it's a perfect house for Tom Cole. It's a Tom Cole <laughs> house. Like, you know, the King up on top of his Hill looking down at his people. Such, yes. And I, I love you gave me, you gave me a, uh, a jacket. Uh, I, I'm not even sure. I'm so sorry to offend all of you karate masters. Um, the uniform uh, without the pants because we thought wearing uh, flamingo shorts is more Tom Cole than doing the whole gi. But I loved your TC. <laughs> like he had his he has his own dojo logo yes. on his head on his headpiece. Yes. God, he's a yes. he's, he, he's you just, <laughs> just you just want to push him <laughs> off the hill. Even yeah, Marissa, if you guys didn't catch that, even when Marissa, when she does this and then she turns and she's giving him the finger behind, yes. she's like, yes, yes, sensei. It's like, so even, even Marissa can't stand him. Yes. So, so good. <laughs> so good. 
<laughs> so good. So good. So much, so much there. And uh, so, so we're talking about this character, Tom Cole. If you haven't seen Cobra Cole, there's a link in the description. You should see the whole thing. Um, yeah. It's only a couple more this, minutes long. Yeah. 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 It's, it's not, it's not too long. Check it out. It's fun. And um, so of course that's based on this character, Tom Cole. And uh, you know, we had a lot of, we had people asking questions about your experience on the show. Of course we have, mm -hmm. I am evil. Elena says, ask him if I could get a boba tea. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Never had a boba tea in my life, by the way. Never had one. Really? Funniest. Yeah. Never had a boba tea. Didn't even know what they were. Well, okay. So when you were shooting that scene, whatever's in the cup, was that truly a boba tea or was that, that something was, else? It was true boba tea, but I didn't drink it. Um, rule number one for actors out there, never eat or drink. Uh, because yeah, Harrison Ford had a great quote. Um, when I'm in a restaurant scene, I just push my food around. I never eat. I just kind of play with it on my fork. Um, because if you ever notice in continuity when people are drinking, you see like a wine glass and the level's here and the next shot, it comes back to them. It's full and it comes down here and it comes, just don't touch it because that helps for continuity. But uh, I didn't sip it. Also to, it, that was a ridiculously perfect cast, uh, casting of the straw when they put that, I don't know how long and big that straw was, but it was such a phallic, that was a personal choice, by the way, by set design to give me a boba tea with a straw that was this big um, because it's just annoying. Like he holds it and he's like way down here. And it's another kind of subliminal like and I'm not sure of what kind of language I can use, but what a D, <laughs> you know, look at the straw he's even got. It's like, God, this guy. Yeah. Oh, man. But it's great. We love it. It's so entertaining. Yeah. Totally um, now, C.H. Wheeler asks, how does it feel to play one of Daniel LaRusso's many arch enemies? And of course, he's got so many great classic enemies like Terry Silver and John Kreese. And you are your characters in that pantheon. What what does it feel like to be in there? Well, Ralph and I, I've never worked with Ralph before. And we actually one of the most nicest, gracious actors uh you know, there's a there's a thing that happens when you're a guest star on a show. So you show up on a on a show, and it it basically happens during what they call lunchtime craft services, when we're, well, the cast and crew is all dismissed at the same time, and everybody lines up, and you get your food, and they have a bunch of tables and chairs put out, and it's a kind of a first day at school type of uh, thing that happens. So you get your plate full of food, and then you decide where am I going to sit. Uh, you don't know the crew. You're the guest star. You don't really know the series regulars or the actors. They've already been uh, introduced and they know each other. They've worked on a few episodes. So they've developed their kind of relationship. And you're just like, all right, so you kind of go off. And a lot of times you sit by yourself or you take your stuff back to your trailer or your room um, if it's too crowded or you just don't really know anybody. or Because that's kind of like first day of school. You get, you're a transfer student. Well, I'll tell you, I was in line with Ralph. Ralph was talking about the food and we were chatting how good it was. And then he said, David, come sit with me. And, you know, like I said, I've done, I've done a, 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 quite a number of guest star shows on networks. I've been doing this like 30 something years. And that was the first time any series regular had ever just went, come over, sit with me. So I sat with him and it wasn't about the show. It wasn't about anything more than how we grew up. We're the same age you know, married, kids, where do you live? When did you move to LA? Just really nice, basic, you know, life, life stuff. Um, and he did say, I love this character that you're playing. And he goes, and I have to say, I'm kind of jealous because it's, it's a character I like to play. He said, um, it's, you know, he goes, I love to play that kind of like snarky, a-hole, douchey kind of guy. Um, they're so much fun to play. I was like, well, uh, you know, Ralph, if you'd like to switch, we can totally do that if you want. Um, <laughs> but he, yeah, we had a, we had a great time. Um, but to be in that pantheon, you know, it's very gracious of you to say, and I appreciate that, but, um, it's nice to just be in, in the family of this whole kind of thing, this animal that has taken off and just be part of it. You know, um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an honor and that's not, uh, I don't take lightly because, you know, as, as a guest star, as a, as a, I'm a, I'm a scale plus 10 journeyman actor. I've been doing it for 30, 
two years now. It's my, been my only job. And I take every single gig um, with, with full, with full graciousness and be grateful because they don't come along very often. Um, and, you know, not to get political at all, uh, but there's been a sea change. There's been a shift. And it's, uh, uh, and it's been a long time coming with Black Lives Matter and Me Too movement. So there's been a sea change in, the, in how casting is being done. It's uh, especially for and you know elderly post middle aged white fellas. Um, we're not really. Uh, we've always been kind of taken all the roles, and now of course it should be that they should be diversified. Casting uh, casting is very diverse as it always should have been, and now it's true. So I'm competing against not just other, you know, Caucasian actors. I'm competing against the entire world of of actors who deserve the same type of, of uh, opportunities and gigs. So any job that comes along right now, I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. And in, in just a minute, we're going to look at like some of your amazing roles that you've had in the past. And of course, you know, you're on that current show, all American. Um, thank you so much, Clifford for the super chat. Really, really appreciate it. Um, Let's see. We have Peter Vonisak from Cobra Kai Companion Podcast says, I imagine there's another Cole family member that's a dentist. You both <laughs> have great teeth and smiles. It's very, very kind. It's very that's, kind. that's just L.A. <laughs> yes. That's just it, L.A. <laughs> yes. But thank uh, you. Uh, Daniel asked Cobra Cole, too. Well, I, I'm open to it. I'm open to it. Uh, you know, you, you, you. Uh, to let everybody know that we shot that during the pandemic mm -hmm. um, when everything was shut down practically. And uh, it was such a real, it was so, because as actors, I'm like, I, uh, the only thing that I was doing was voiceover um, because it was the only thing I could do from my booth in my place where I, studios were closed, casting offices were closed. Uh, so we were only doing voiceovers. And since that was the only thing being produced, the entire creative community of actors all decided, oh, I can do voiceovers too. So that market just got so saturated. When you approached me on this, you're like, we're going to take all the precautions and do all of that and the, and the COVID test. And I'm like, fine, fine, fine. And we're going to do that. I'm like, fine, fine. When, when do I go? When is it? Like, well, we're going to, I'm like, fine, just tell me when I have to go, when I have to show up. Because I was so itching just to do something, just to get out in front of the camera and just, just, you know, get the, get the, because it shut, when it shut down, it shut down. Like the whole world did, you know, we were not immune to that. So, but thank you. Indeed. I appreciate that. So yeah, Cole well, too, whatever the, whatever the uh, storyline could be, you come up with it. I'm not a writer, you know. There are many storylines. Would, would love to dive into that uh, 100%. Uh, talking about Cobra Kai going forward, Marianella says, this season, Terry Silver is going to need the help of the Cole family. I hope they both appear. And that would be great. And as people who are eagle-eyed viewers know, uh, Terry is tight with the DA, who was Willie Cole, who was, was bribable. Cole. Yeah, right. and I, I assume Tom Cole would be bribable. I. I, I assume that that maybe the uh, morals, moral standards are are probably about the same for all the coals, maybe. So yeah, yeah, you could see that, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. we're stained. We're morally and ethically <laughs> stained. <laughs> we we only answer it. We're stained with green. How much? What's it going to cost? Uh, yeah. yeah, but that's but you're talking about that, and yeah, that's right. I you know we talked about, um, and I appreciate everybody out there like Mark Tom Cole, but. You know, as a journeyman actor like myself, I, I know where storylines begin and end. And uh, I was a I was I was in that storyline for that particular reason. And then when Denoya, when uh, Daniel went to Japan to get the contract back and take it from me, um, that set up what could be down the line. I don't know um, a reason for Tom Cole to still hang in there to get revenge. So because you, you, the way that you screwed with Tom Cole is you took away my livelihood. You, you can, you know, you can make fun of me. You can make fun of my commercials. You can uh, pick on me all you want, but don't mess with my bottom line. Uh, and you, and Daniel did that. I mean, I went after his contract. He went back to Japan and got it back. And he literally took all of my foreign business away. So that is something that you're like, hmm, and Terry's in trouble. Tom's got money. 
Terry needs help. And if that's what's happened, like I said, I'm not dropping any hints as to season six. I don't know. But if you were looking at something of how Tom Cole fits in any storyline, it has to be Daniel related to make sense of why, yes. why I'm still in the picture. Because there's no sense to bring me back unless I'm back. I'm getting revenge on what he did to me. So, Well, not to theorize. I know right now that the writer's room is working on season six. So I don't want to necessarily step on their toes. But of course... Daniel thinks he's in the clear as of the end of season five. And Tom Cole is right. perhaps the biggest threat to Daniel's personal, his income, his professional side. Uh, all the money he has is tied up in that business. And Tom Cole is the biggest threat to that. Financially, know? yes. And and I believe uh, Crease is on the lam. So Crease is, is going to need some help too as well. So. If if Crease is coming into the picture on season six, anybody who needs financial backing, if T if Terry Silver's in jail and all of his stuff's been frozen, Tom Cole's got expendable cash. He's got some <laughs> he's got some walk he's got some walking around money. <laughs> right. And if and if we're right, he's from perhaps a dynasty of uh, wealthy people as well um, that are perhaps connected. Uh, Gabe says David is such a gracious and humble guy. This <laughs> has been such a good stream. <laughs> I'm acting. I'm acting, Gabe. I'm acting. <laughs> well, as as someone who knows you and who's worked with you, uh, that is absolutely true. You are a gracious, humble guy, and just willing to do anything for your art. Just wonderful to to talk to. Wonderful person to know. So except I'm very... porn, I'm not I'm not gonna do porn. <laughs> anything for my art except porn. I'm not gonna. I'm five foot seven. No no petite males. No, not gonna. We'll, do it. <laughs> we'll draw the line. We'll draw the line there. Um, <laughs> All of a sudden, it's like, and we're checking out. We're checking out. We're checking out. We're. Checking out. <laughs> Uh, Big T says Cobra Cole, Cobra Cole 2, The, the Rise, Rise of Willie. Willie, yeah. Yes. That'd David Harris asked you, do all the Coles like to poach the salmon? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is Willie, one of Willie Cole's favorite dishes. Yeah, the post um, salmon, yeah. Lupo God, you music. guys, it's... Go ahead, please, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. oh I, was, I was just going to go. Uh, Lupo Music says, I think the Coles would actually make such a great comedy duo receiving Terry Silver out of jail or something. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just, it's funny how, uh, not funny, but it's really interesting how people dive into, especially all the Easter eggs and the things that they remember when you watch, when something so important uh, of a series and then goes, it goes off the rails a little bit or doesn't follow a storyline, how the fans are like, whoa, 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 that doesn't make sense. And they'll, they call you on it. They remind you of it. They're like, they have this kind of, and the conspiracy things behind it, what do you think's going to happen next? It's really interesting to see how people get so invested in it and then have like even even yourself, Ken, is like how you're so invested yeah. in it and going, what about this? What about this? <laughs> and I've, saw, I've seen that very much in this and in very much in uh, a lot of the video games that yes. I voice and stuff that when people I've never I've never had the uh, luxury, hopefully one day soon, because I've been doing VO forever is to be what, what you guys call, uh, you know, the Comic-Con, the sci-fi cons and all those games because video games are a multi-billion dollar industry and they have those signings and things like that uh, where a lot of my friends who do VO do that. And, but it's like the fans that show up for that and the conferences, they're just voracious and they're like, don't mess with the storyline. Don't do anything that's out of the storyline. And now they're really, they're, they want to be, they want you to hold you accountable to it. So when all of your comments are like, Willie, Willie Cole and Poach Salmon. I'm like, if you had a gun to my head, I'd be like, <laughs> I don't remember that. But you're like, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, it's uh, it's so much fun to get into uh, into all of this. Obviously, yeah, you're right. I'm I'm hopelessly uh, into the Cobra Kai bandwagon and, and so many other people are. The thing is, we talk about Cobra Kai, but you have had a career that has spanned just decades you've been in so many things from commercials yeah. um but one of my favorites uh and the first time i saw you was in a show oh, called man. titus now okay. titus yeah. yeah now i i just want to say we're gonna we're gonna show a clip of you as tommy shafter from titus mm -hmm. and um this was a revolutionary groundbreaking sitcom and i i want to get your response to all this but let's start um, for everyone who hasn't seen titus 
uh, let me show some some Tommy Shafter clips from your yeah. work <laughs> in Titus. Here, here, here we go. Well, someone's turning into a woman. Yeah, and I'm looking at her. <laughs> Amy. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. Wait, Amy. Wait, what is that behind your ear? It's a nickel. <laughs> What is that behind your ear? Oh. oh! If we all had guns, there'd be no more carjacking. Get out of the car! Get out of the street! Forgiving mood, maybe you can forgive Tommy for having naked dreams about you. <laughs> was a psych major for a year. You're a clown college in Sarasota, but his career was cut short when he lost his baby toe in a nasty shoe explosion. Hey, kids, want to see my dipsy doodle dance? Oh, all I see is like, oh, look at all that dark hair. Look at that young guy. <laughs> That's why he asked me, do you ever watch what you do? And I go, no, who wants to watch themselves age? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Such amazing. It's like you do everything in that series. <laughs> so much great physical comedy. And that was, yeah. I remember in college seeing that uh, dan uh, clown exploding clown shoe dance thing and i was just like oh my god this is amazing and i was wondering if you could talk about well first off the show was just a very groundbreaking show it, yeah it, it actually really was. reinvented it reinvented the sitcom and i was wondering if you could talk about that because you actually beat out steve carell for that I role did. poor guy whatever happened to him huh <laughs> poor steve carell he was devastated um yeah that was and I'll make a very, very long story short. I got that. I was in New York and I flew out for pilot season when they had pilot season back then. And it was January to May, uh, January to April. So I flew out to L.A., got the show and um, it didn't get picked up for a year. We shot the pilot and then it kind of sat. And then all of a sudden, Malcolm in the Middle came out. We came out. Uh, that 70s show came out and Fox had just a banner lineup and they stuck us right behind Malcolm in um, that 70s show. So, uh, yeah, it was it was a it, groundbreaking in the sense that Christopher Titus was one of the very first people to do uh, the talking to the camera, the fourth wall, breaking the fourth wall. He uh, and he and no nothing was off limits at the time. Um, he he talks very openly. The show is based upon his stand up comedy and his growing up in a um, very a difficult childhood with mentally ill and schizophrenia in his parents and his mom, uh, suicide, uh, alcoholism with his dad. Uh, his dad had six heart attacks, was married like five times. So it was a very dysfunctional family type of life. And like, like what he Titus did, the genius of it was he turned it around and made it funny. And he talked about it all the time. And then he brought all of this to the, to the, uh, to the network and the two showrunners, uh, Jack, Kenny and Brian Hargrove, they put it together with Titus and Titus, they all three wrote it and created this dynamic sitcom. Tommy was kind of like, I would say the Marilyn Munster, for those of you who know the Munsters, uh, was the Marilyn Munster of the group. Uh, he was the next door neighbor. There was no reason, there was no way that any, any of these people in the Titus world would have hung out with Tommy Shafter um, personally but he was a next door neighbor. He grew up with them. So he kind of just became ingratiated with them and they took him under his wing. And uh, Tommy's the, the voice of reason. He's the straight and narrow. He's, uh, you know, the great thing about Tommy was we just didn't know anything about him. Uh, was he, it was, was he, Tommy came off very slightly effeminate and there was never any 
reason to believe he was straight or gay or whatever that never really came into play. And except for the episode, Tommy's not gay, which is one of my favorite episodes. Um, that created a really nice dynamic because these guys were car jockeys and they were mechanics and they built hot rods. And then I was sweater vest and khakis. And while they're sitting around, you know, doing the man stuff, I'm in there like, no, 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 no. You know, the voice of reason. So um, it was a incredible experience. It was my first sitcom ever. Uh, and it's for my first series regular. And I got to tell you, it's just, it, it, I want another show so badly. Um, being a guest star on so many shows is, it's a, it's a, um, what do you call that? It's a double-edged sword or it's bittersweet because you get to show up and you're treated wonderfully like a series regular, but your day ends. <clears throat> and when they say, you're, okay, your character's done, you leave and I get back in the bread line again. Uh, but the series regular is you go to work every day and you're just working on a, on a series and being creative and trying to make things, things don't work, you try things, it's funny, it's not, but that whole thing, like eight, 10 hours a day, five days a week is just nirvana for me. But yeah, I got a chance. They let me do anything I want. They were like, you go do, do whatever you want. And I was blessed with been given that kind of carte blanche um, with the physical comedy stuff. And I, I did a lot of it. Uh, and it was just, it was wonderful. I miss it. I miss it. Yeah, it was a really fantastic show. And we have a question from Steven. He says he was wonderful on the underrated sitcom Titus. Does he have any funny Stacy <clears throat> Keach stories? Stacy Keach uh, is as the night is as the nicest, gentlest human being as he is terrifying to be with, um, because he's such a presence, and he's just he is the the quintessential old school man's man, guy's guy, and he's got a big barrel chested voice. And when he talks, he talks down here like this. And he's like, oh, yeah, come here. And it's like everything is like, even when he says hello, he's like, morning, David. You're like, hi. He's like, you feel a responsibility to answer because it doesn't, he's warm and he's a giant teddy bear. Um, I will tell I don't have a lot of funny Stacy Keach stories because he is a very funny, uh, likable man. But one of the weirdest stories was he's very open and transparent about his, his past. And he had his moments with the law and, and uh, getting arrested and stuff. And he would talk about that, like sitting on the stage and we're all on a break and something. And Christopher would ask him anything because Titus would just Titus was like, look, I've been through crap, through hell. So what about your stories? And Stacy would just like come out with these stories. And with due respect to him, I won't repeat them. But right. we're like, whoa. I mean, people have people have pretty interesting lives if you just sit back and let them tell you a little bit about it. And, you know, Titus's life, Stacy's life, Cynthia had a really amazing uh, recovery from illness when she was a young girl who almost died of, of some sort of thing that happened to her, which is documented. So I'm not, you know, outing her. Um, but I'm, I was a, a boring little Irish Catholic kid from upstate New York who went to grade school and Catholic school and went to military school for high school. And uh, I was like, man, you guys, I didn't, haven't done anything. It's like, I didn't ever, I've never even stole anything. And they all started laughing because it's like, that's because that's why you're playing Tommy. It's like, you, you were like, well, yeah, you don't steal. Stealing's bad. I'm like, ah, see, that's why you got this role. <laughs> right. But, yes. But I'm sorry. I don't have any really great stories. But Stacy Keach is, is a phenomenal. He's, he was, for those of you who don't know, was considered American, America's Olivier when he came out when he was younger. He's a brilliant actor. Brilliant actor. Yes. And as a follow-up, Marianella asks, um, question for David, are you still in contact with the actors of Titus? Well, a couple of years ago, we did a reunion show. Um, uh, Titus did a reunion show. We were at 54, and it ended. The series ended, if you remember, whoever watched it. We got arrested um for making a plane land we were on our way to a funeral and we got arrested for causing a plane that needed to divert a landing and they thought it was because we were terrorists which was really fox almost didn't put that on the air because that was about a year after 9 11. so they're like this as funny as this is this is too current 
So they did put it on the air. Uh, we did get arrested in the episode by the FBI. And the last show of the season is Titus goes to jail. Uh, he takes the fall for all of us because we all had some part of it. We didn't do anything bad. It just was a mis- uh, unfortunate incident. He goes to jail and then the series gets canceled. So a couple of years ago, right after the pandemic, and I think maybe two years ago, we did a Titus wrote a follow up episode and we shot it. We rehearsed it for a week. We shot it, did a three camera in his production facility he has. And uh, we aired it on YouTube uh, on a pay-per-view kind of not basically a five dollar subscription buy a ticket and you get the, the access. And we did a 35 minute uh, closer of the series 20 years later. Um, and uh, yes, I still keep in touch with Zach. Uh, I, I text Zach uh, every once in a while. Zach, well, Zach, as you know, was, was Scud Farkas in A Christmas Story. Yes. So every Christmas I, I always text him and I always say, <laughs> Merry Christmas. I still haven't watched it. And I haven't watched, I've never seen A Christmas Story. And then wow. when I found out he was in A Christmas Story, I just gave him so much crap all the time. And I said, well, I, it's, I'm a, I'm a, it's a wonderful life guy. I don't watch mm-hmm. Christmas Story because there's no reason for me to watch A Christmas Story. I don't know anybody in A Christmas Story. And he's like, why do you do this to me? Um, Zach is, is a really, he's a, he's a really good friend. Um, Cynthia, I haven't seen too much, but Cynthia continues to work all the time. Uh, it's, I did text Titus uh, a few couple of days ago, in fact, because we all another person um, like the like your show, the Cole Casting. Somebody did an anniversary of Titus over the twenty years and had a uh, I think it's cracked cracked dot com yes. did a did a thing on everybody and asked us to talk about uh, the show. So um, we talked about and then Chris, Christopher texted me and said thank you for all the lovely kind words and stuff and and yeah so. Yeah, Stacy. Unfortunately, I don't. I don't even know where Stacy is. He he's in New York or he's in Poland, so he's always back and forth somewhere. But yeah, yeah, magic of text texting every now and then. Indeed, and for everyone who hasn't seen Titus, you can see it on YouTube. I think Christopher Titus has uploaded the entire series. Um, so, yes. So yes. So. <laughs> Which, which I'm out. not, I'm not commenting on, but go ahead. Right. <laughs> we, we, we don't comment about legal things, but no, um, we don't. No, <laughs> but, but if you can find it, enjoy it. You know, it's yeah. It's out there. Yeah. It um, is a brilliant, it's a brilliant show. Oh, it's wonderful. And there's one, one thing I wanted to tell people about and share with people who may not know that they might have seen you live. I know a lot of fans watching right now are fans <laughs> of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and wow. you you starred as Michelangelo yeah. on the national or international live tour. This yeah. is when the turtles were just exploded. They were so yeah. popular and you played Michelangelo. And if it's all right with you, I might play a clip of you Pl- as play Michelangelo. that. What are we talking? 30 something, 1991, 1990. Yes. So that's 30, like 33 years ago. Yes, yes. Why are you doing? So the, why are you hurting? Why do you hurt me like this? Why? Why? <laughs> well, why do you hurt? The, me? The, this is better because this is back when you looked like a like a turtle, like a well, when, I when I was jacked. Yeah, when I was jacked on. When I was just on the roids, I was. Yeah, it was. Ba- it was. It was time. I was. I was shooting too much. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here. Here is David as Michelangelo. Check it out. You guys afraid of Shredder? No. So that's, that's amazing. And the thing is, everyone in those crowds were so excited to see the Ninja Turtles. And this was, this was just a huge event. And it was huge. In the, in, in the chat, if you have seen David and didn't realize it, let us know. Um, but what was that experience <laughs> if you're like? over If you're over 30. <laughs> right, right. You know, uh, I had just graduated from grad school. I got my mm-hmm. master's got my master's in theater, just graduated. And I was uh, living in New York and we have a thing called um, Actors' Equity. If, if you don't know, an Actors' Equity requires that any equity show, if an actor doesn't have representation, the show has to have an open call. 
to give other actors within the union a chance to audition. So this breakdown came out in the trades for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles national tour. And the only reason, the only reason I did this, thank you, Cobra Kai, didn't it? The only reason I did this was because it said, seeking actors five, seven or under, like no, nobody over five, seven, because they had to have a uniform height. All the turtles were the same. And I went, dude, I'm five foot seven. Now it was a Broadway show. I don't sing. I can hold a tune, but I don't sing. I can dance. I move well, but I'm not a professional dancer. But I said, I fit the suit. So I'm going to go to this thing. And I go down the Broadway Dance Center, and it is just hundreds of real professional dancers. And I go into the room, and I got, everybody gets a, 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 a number put on their chest, and the choreographers teach like 50 guys in one room 16 uh, beats. Like eight, first, first count of eight. Second count of eight. They do it a bunch of times. Then they go, okay, 10 guys at a time will do it. And then next 10, next 10, next 10. And then they stand there and they say, okay, if we call out your number, stay. Everyone else leave. I was so bad, so bad at this audition. I literally grabbed my bag and was at the door. Because I, I couldn't keep up with the choreography. And I'm at the door waiting for them to call my number. They don't call. And I'm like, that's weird. That's a mistake. So I come back in for the next round. Same thing happens again. I go by the door and I'm waiting and they don't call my number and I'm not any better. I get the first count of eight down, second count of eight. I'm a mess. I'm like flailing and wrong. We get all the way down to the final and I come, ba- I come in and it's, it's eight of us. That's it. Eight of us are left. Four guys, four guys. And they said, okay, it's a Friday. This is the weekend. We want you to go home and we want you to do a lip sync but we want you to come back with a mask on. We don't want to we, pretend we want you to dance to whatever song you want to do for one minute to show us your moves, but please put a mask on and pretend you're singing it because you're not going to see your face in the show. And I'm like, well, I can do that. But I'm still competing against Broadway dancers. These guys were in Cats and, and all of the shows back then, 30 years ago, God. Well, I get it. I got the, I got the gig. And I could not believe it, but I did ask them when I got it. I said, listen, I was terrible at the dancing. I go, how, why, why did you do that? I go, did you guys keep me every single time? Because I was so bad, it was actually funny to watch. And Tom White and Bob Bejan, who are the creators of the show, said, we wanted you from the very beginning for what you wrote on the card. The choreographer, Patty Colombo, wanted you cut round one. And Patty's like, yeah, you had to go. And I'm like, I did have to go. I should have gone. Um, but Ty, Tom said, you wrote, it says musical theater experience. And I wrote, this is my first and last because I wasn't a sing and dance guy. So the great thing about the show was it was street dancing. It wasn't professional choreography. So that's why. I was able to, to pull it off and do it. The show itself was massive. We had nine production trucks. We had special effects. We were going to do a week in each city. We had Pyrotex. We had uh, the roadie crews that just came off ZZ Top. We had professional musicians that did the score. We had this massive suits. We had about 70 people working on the show. And we were going to do a week in each city, a 40-week tour. We got about six weeks out. And then the Gulf War happened in 1991. And the minute that happened, the show got cut down to one-nighters. So we did 140 cities. We went from playing nine. With that clip is Radio City Music Hall. Mm-hmm. We went from playing Radio City Music Hall to UNLV to 9,000, 10,000 kids to like playing <laughs> community center gyms like at 11 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday for 200 kids just to keep the show on and running. It was it was, it was an incredible experience. We did a bus and truck. It was a year, about nine months on the road. Um, but I, I tell you, it was absolutely uh, amazing to work with all of those, those actors and to bring all of that to those little kids because the little kids lost their minds. They were so great. I think one of the hardest things was the Make-A-Wish kids. They had a couple of Make-A-Wish kids. And they wanted to meet Michelangelo. And that was really hard. That was super hard to get through. Um, Because, I mean, mean, I'm in my costume and I'm like, 
oh, it's like this is your wish to meet Michelangelo and Ninja Turtle. But we did a, we had a had a lot of great times. I mean, we did get into a little bit of trouble uh, because we did the Oprah show, and we started the Oprah show by coming out of the sewers in the street running because we were late to get to the set to Oprah, and she's like, Oprah's on stage going, listen, my guests are late. I don't know where they are. And the split screen is us running through the streets of Chicago, trying to find the Oprah studios. And we come out of the, the, um, the sewers. Well, of course, little kids, the next two, three weeks, were getting caught and getting trapped in sewer vents. Oh, no. Or trying to slide down in the street into the, not the manhole covers, but like the, the water. They were trying to find us. And they were sticking their heads in there going, Tom, Michelangelo, Raphael. And parents were like, so all the sewer stuff had to go. Unfortunately, we couldn't do that anymore. Wow. Like, we don't, we don't live in the sewer. But it was, an, it was an amazing tour. It was just awful, awful outfits. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I have a picture of you guys in, in the outfits. Uh, oh. Look at that. Where'd you, where'd you find this one? Oh, I have, I have my deep dark sources uh and then uh, that's you on the right correct no that is not me oh you is have... that you with the split legs no that is the um that looks like a because uh, there were a bunch of different turtle sets that went out those actually no uh no that's that was our outfits but that's definitely not me i gotcha uh, um yeah we had we had four sets of turtles we had the turtles, we did the show. Then there was the marketing turtles that went out ahead to gain momentum. We were coming like in two weeks. So they would go to all the malls and perform and stuff to, let, to give, the, give the show a little bit of pre, pre uh, publicity, as they say. And then we had um, the turtles who did the movies, which we were not. And then we had the, like the Six Flag turtles and the Bush Garden turtles. So that's, that's somebody else. But yeah, here's the thing about that you were not allowed to be filmed without your head on. Wow. And, and we would get in trouble for that. I, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this, is, this is a bad story, but I'm going to tell it. Uh, we were in University of UNLV, and because the suits were incredibly warm, we always, uh, in intermission, had cooling towels and ice packs on everything because we were just sweating our butts off. Um, but <laughs> one time, and the way we cooled down is uh, they, they loaded the suit before we put it on with baby powder. And they would put a whole thing of baby powder everywhere in the suit to try to keep it cool. So what they did was in order to make it easier to do, they cut the tops of the baby powder container off. So like an idiot, not thinking. And because I'm, you know, a child, I took like two or three of the baby powder bottles and I dumped them and I made a massive pile of like of uh that looked like uh scarface cocaine and <laughs> i took michelangelo's head and i was like ah! and i just pushed my face into the cocaine and they took pictures of it and then i pulled back and i'm just like the michelangelo face is just covered in white powder <laughs> well everyone's taking pictures because back then thank you very much for outing my age there's no cell phones there's no video cameras everything was in kodak you know like like right. those instamatics so people are cracking up, standing around taking pictures, and the stage manager, uh, production manager, coordinator, comes into the room and sees my dumb face in this helmet, covered with white powder, and I'm like, Ninja Turtles, like I've just done a, a rail of blow. And he, I got, I almost got fired for that one, because like he took all the cameras, and he goes, do you have any idea? Whoa, and I'm like laughing at it now going, do you understand he would have had to have taken the photo to the photo store, had it developed like right. a CVS and then gotten the picture and then had to mail the picture off to somebody or given it to some place to go. I got some back, you know, some Ninja <laughs> Turtle stuff. I'm like, it would have taken like two weeks. It's like now you just like take a picture, upload and it's viral and your career is over in a second. But yeah, right. we, we we had to do something to keep our, our morale up. We were doing. 140 cities we were doing one nighters and that, those are that's deadly that's yeah. deadly yeah well we we've got people who wish they would have gone uh big ram toner mm -hmm. says i'm 39 never seen the live yeah. action turtles but i was a huge fan and wish i had 
And then, of course, Matt Moore says, David, you have way better dance moves than Ralph Macchio and Karate Kid 3. Uh, so I have to ask you, though, David, like I yeah. know famously actors uh, try to take things from the productions. I was wondering, did you ever happen to take anything? You did from... ask me that. And I yes, yes, yes I do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, actors, wow. actors steal crap all the time. Um, but, but when you're on a show, and you, like you don't steal it as a guest star because you get in trouble. But. Right. As Michelangelo, what I have, and I don't know why I've never gotten rid of this, and I think it's probably because someday it'll be worth something if I end up being like a serial killer or something. But uh, <laughs> this is the original tour jacket. <laughs> oh, this wow. Is, this was the, this one, there's a story behind this. Let's see if I can get Michelangelo. And then you can, the, unfortunately, the, it's the, it is the logo of the, the guitar coming through the thing um yeah it's been dazzled <laughs> and the whole deal it's absolutely incredible um what happened was we 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 previewed in providence rhode island before we went to radio city and we had all of this pre-production rehearsal and everything and all this choreography but we were doing it all in our sweats you know or just our dance clothes and sweats and then we had to put the costumes on and we put the costumes on and that kind of constricted us a little bit and then they put the shells on us and we had no idea that these shells were going to go from here all the way to the back of our thigh. So all of the dancing, everything that we were doing completely went out the window. We couldn't move because as you would walk, the shell would bang you on the back of the head or bang you on the thigh. Mm -hmm. And this was serious dancing. So like street dancing. So we all, a bunch of us fainted. I went down Providence. I fainted off stage and not fainted, fainted completely out, but I went down and collapsed. They pulled the shell off and they just kind of, you know, put, you know, cold compresses and everything. The other turtles were like, I can't go back for the second half. They had the stand in turtles come in and do the second half and they had to make a decision. And they're like, we can't do this show with these shells. It's killing us. We can't move in them. We can't dance in them. And, you know, we can't, there's no movement. And we had really hard dancing to do. So they made a decision. They took all of the shells off. They threw them in a dumpster like $40,000 worth of beautiful made, uh, you know, these gorgeous plastic shells in a dumpster in Providence. And they commissioned uh, a company overnight. These poor women, I don't know where they went and got these, but they got, they got a bunch of denim jackets and they said, bedazzle the crap out of it. Put M's and R's and L's and D's on it for their names. Here's the logo that they spray painted and they put all the rhinestones on it. We got it back within like two days. Um, and those were the, that's the tour, the official tour jacket. And I've always wow. been like, yeah, I don't really keep stuff. You know, I don't have like that memorabilia wall, but I'm like, I like this. I'm going to keep this. This is, <laughs> this is, this is just, this is the perfect jacket. Like if I ever lose my mind, you know, and I go completely off the deep end, I'll just throw that jacket on with a pair of cowboy boots <laughs> and they just walk down. <laughs> Ninja turtle breakdown. <laughs> Cause it's, that is, I mean, it's, it's nice. It's, it's shiny. It's got all sorts of things on it and sparkles, you know? And I also got it. My nephew, Joey, Joe Fick, uh, was a guitar player for the natives of the new dawn. One of the lead singers. And he, his band was doing very well about a decade ago and he was going to go on tour. And I said, you got to take the jacket. You get your rock star. This is a rock star jacket. And he was like, not only did he see the show when he was a tyke, he took the jacket and then I, I signed it for him. Like splinter says shred it and Michelangelo. Oh, wow. And I just gave it to him and he was so sweet. He just, uh, he wore the jacket on tour and then he's, I'm giving it back to you. go. Oh yeah. You're definitely giving it back to me. But it's, it still lived on in his Rocky days, rock rocking days. Wow. That is, that is incredible. <laughs> it's, that's so exciting because it's pretty rare. I don't think we've heard, you know, from many of the cast and crew of that show, what it's like to be in a part of that show. Um, we've got uh, some great uh, comments. David Harris says a lot of people love Michelangelo. I think uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, Dave Schrock. Great to see you, Dave. Hello, Cobra Cole family. Dave was the, of course, amazing yep. filmmaker and cinematographer for Cobra Cole. So thank yep. you for joining us, Dave. And, so, David, I want to thank you for joining us today. It's been an amazing talk. And I know it's so many great. people here fun. are, well, I think we're all just such fans of you from Cobra Kai. And oh, I was wondering so if you could, nice. Well, it's true. 
And uh, I was wondering if you could give us some some final thoughts, your reflections on Cobra Kai, the series and Tom Cole, what it's like being part of that. Um, I guess uh, whatever your heart sings. Uh, do you have any comments? Well, for, first of all, to all the fans who watch it um, and stick with it, you know, uh, thank you. Uh, to do a reboot like that is it has a, like we said, talked about before, it has a sentimental value for some people. Um, we are very fishbowly, you know, our attention span as humans now, um, because we have the ability to delete and, you know, move, move, move. There's 800 freaking shows on TV. Um, and to get a base like that and grab them and hold on to them, that says two things. It says, the, the three producers that put this, this bad boy together did a great job by including all of the ages. Um, the sentimental people like me who remember the films and, and it gave a, a voice to the younger kids who wanted to watch it. But to you guys who watch it, the fans, this show is completely nothing without you. Because if you don't watch it, Netflix doesn't, doesn't re-up it. Nobody gives money to make another season. Uh, it's, it's important to remember how much cachet you guys put to a show by just tuning in and watching and talking about it and loving it and, you know, being fans of it. Uh, you, you weigh, you are the deciding factor. That's the funny thing that people like, well, you know, what do they care? They don't care about my voice. It's like, well, yeah, here's the problem. If you don't tune in, then the show doesn't get picked up and the show dies a horrible death or a quiet death doesn't get renewed, but to go six seasons for a reboot, that's pretty impressive because most of the stuff, what are you going to talk about? Most of the stuff is like done. Like we were talking about Titus doing a reboot. It's like, okay, but it's 20 years later. We got, something's got to be fresh. Something's got to be new. You can't rehash the same old stuff. But uh, I think it, it's for me personally, I can't believe as a guest star actor on a television show that I've only done two episodes that there's still, uh, and it's, it's for you too, Ken, I thank you. You keep that coal thing going. But for me, it's just, it's always a, it's a gift because this kind of thing that we're doing right now is usually regulated to series regulars. The people who like, you know, for like, uh, like Ralph, um, for Crease, the, the guys who are, who've been in it, who have the history, and I'm sure they've done a bazillion of these, but the guest star stuff, we don't get this kind of play. Um, and the only reason we do is for people like you who say, well, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. So um, I say thank you to you. And I say thank you to the fans for taking time to tune in. Cause you know, like I said, we're, we're, we're like goldfish in a bowl. It's like, Oh look, a house. Oh look, a house. It's like, we just keep moving and scrolling until something sticks. And, uh, the fact that you hung out this long is, is great. And I appreciate it. For those of you who are still here, by the way, because you have lives. <laughs> Go live your life. <laughs> well, thank you so much, David. And I am i know I'm not just speaking for myself. I'm speaking for thousands, tens, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people who want to see more Tom Cole. Uh, we, have, we have a comment um, from Imagine Dragon says in season six, you should fight <laughs> Ralph. It's that, gonna that be a quick be. fight. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Well, well, thank you. Thanks so much for joining us today, David. Um, thanks for asking. Oh, thanks for 100%. asking. And, and thanks for doing the, the coal stuff that we did together. And yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's great. It's, it's always fun. And even lunch the other day was fun. I haven't seen you in it was great. quite a long time. We had, we had lunch for the, you know, that's what we do out here in LA. You know, Ken calls me up, let's do lunch. <laughs> and we go to some cool place and we sit around and, you know, we pretend we're important. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Well, 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 David, it's it's always a pleasure. You are so talented as an actor, so ah, great nice. as a human being. And uh, thank you for coming on and spending time with your many fans. And uh, we can only hope to see more Tom Cole in the future. Uh, and we'd we'll love say, to have you back sometime. Yeah, whatever whatever happens, you know. As, uh, as I told you before, and people are like, I want more Tom Cole. It's like, not up to me. You know, I, I accept what I, I, I get, what I get, and I'm happy to get it. And if there's more, fantastic. If there's not, I just on to the next, on to the next. Like you and I said, just keep showing up. For right. those of you out there who want to do this, just keep showing up. Just keep showing up. That's all you got to do. So Indeed. 
Indeed. And if anyone needs to get their David Shatroff fix now, you can see him <laughs> on the CW series All American. Uh, and we played a clip earlier. Uh, thanks for joining us, David. And you got it. Everyone, thank you for watching today. If you haven't, go ahead and like and subscribe. And we look forward to seeing you next time on the Ken Cast or perhaps the Cole Cast. All right. <laughs> and have a great and have a great weekend and be Super Bowl safe. <laughs> That's right. Enjoy the Super Bowl, everyone.